imagine I could learn everything about Yerushalayim. And I was in Yerushalayim. But you know one thing? I don't smell with Yerushalayim. You know what that means? It didn't really get inside of you. I can be a paid lecturer and give speeches on Yerushalayim. I can even write a paperback book and make money on it. But if I don't smell from it, that means it never got into me. You know? Some people talk about God the whole time, right? Give out books and everything. Sit there, roll their eyes and everything is cute and holy. But some of them don't smell with God, you know. They don't smell with it. And there are some people, the real people, they smell so good. Smell so good. You know, sometimes you meet parents and you watch them and they tell their children, ah, oh, this, this, lovey, lovey. And your nose tells you it's just it isn't real. And then you meet some holy parents and they smell like parents. They really smell. So before I say goodbye to Shabbos, I say, please Shabbos, I'm begging you, can you please get into me so deep that wherever I go, I should smell with you. That wherever I walk, people should say, ah, oh, this Hidala had a real good Shabbos, you know. And I want to share this with you, friends. If I had a good steak and you didn't, it's just too bad for you. <laughs> but if I had a good Shabbos, and you see me on Wednesday walking on the street, and I smell with Shabbos, and the whole Shabbos gets right into you. Just one smell. One smell. And uh, you see the difference between the missionaries for Shabbos, the messengers of Shabbos, and the messengers of Coca-Cola is very simple. The messengers of Coca-Cola give a big speech. I mean the Coca-Cola God. And they're the Shabbos sticker God. The God of Coca-Cola, big speeches, Shabbos sticker, Shabbos sticker messengers, they smell so good, you know. I give out, does it smell? Don't know if I told you, the Holy Sochot Shiver, he was very strong on that. Thousands of people would come from all over the world to talk to him. And so his thing was, when a person walked in through the door, he would not look at them. He would sit there for a few minutes, inhale the air, you know. Smells, what kind of vibrations, what kind of a smell. And then according to that, sometimes he would shake this person's hand, and sometimes he would not shake this person's hand. And how sad to be in the Sochachova's presence not to shake his holy hand. Anyway, I want you to bless me, and I want you to bless you. Let's bless each other. I give out that we need the holy smell of Shabbos, of holiness, of realness. You know, we have so many friends, but not all of them have the smell of friendship. You know. The holiest thing in the world is that every word you utter should be heard and should be smelled. That every action I'm doing should have such a holy smell. I want to share this with you. The Gemara says, Chayef inish lipsume bepoye at A person has to be so drunk and poor but you know what Lipsuma really means if you translate it properly? Lipsuma comes from what Psumim. And poor of a person has to smell so much. Right? Because you have to poor. Meaning to say maybe Shabbos you can get by without smelling. Purim is so real. If you don't smell Purim dick, you didn't do it. So we got to bless each other, you know, everything we believe in, everything we know should be real in the deepest, deepest depths of us. And then something else happens. After the smell of Shabbos is upon us, then the light of Shabbos is upon us. Gewalt, do we have a light. So beautiful. You see, the people who don't smell, they don't have a light either. Everything they say is dark. 
They talk about light, but it's the darkest light there is. Because do you know something? You think darkness is dark? There is a certain light which is darker than all the darkness in the world. Because dark is real good light, because dark never said I'm light. <laughs> darkness was never lying to you. But imagine if light comes to you and says I'm light, but it's not light. That's the most awful darkness there is, right? So, during the week, I'm begging out, please, Keep my eyes open, I shouldn't fall for that darkness which calls itself light. You know, friends, Gewalt, you know, mo I hate to say bad things, 99% of the light of the world is absolute darkness. It's awesome darkness. The world thinks there's such a thing as civilization, right? The world calls civilization light. It's murder incorporated, right? Is it anything else? Has civilization made human beings out of us? If a human being makes it, it's just a miracle from God, not because of civilization. Okay, you can say a lot of miracles are happening, that I'll, I'll admit, you know. But there is civilization, it's a lie, right? Then some people say, I'm an intellect. Have you ever heard such a lie in your life? What do you really understand? If you understand something, why don't you do it? You know? Can you imagine I will tell you I'm an inter I understand that this is poison, then I'm eating it. What does it mean? I really didn't understand what poison is all about, right? Because if you understand it, and if you're normal, you don't eat it. You know what the world is talking about? How many books are written on love, on peace, on, on everything in the world? And the people themselves don't do it, right? Remember I told you that this man wrote a book on love and someone knocks on the door late at night and he says, listen, please give me some bread, I'm, I'm starving. He says, what a chutzpah, you know, to disturb me. <laughs> Don't you see I'm writing a book on love? <laughs> you know, how can you disturb me in the middle? Okay, friends, now let's... Can we get even closer? We gotta, get, we gotta do it. We gotta do it. Pochata di noi, Eleina Melachoi, Lomboi, Repri Hagofen. Pochata di noi, Eleina Melachoi, Lomboi, Demi Nepsomi. Amen. Pochata di noi, Eleina Melachoi, Lomboi, Demi
Say something about your husband just like that for uh, the future history. 
with the tone, whatever it is, say whatever you want. No. Please? No. I want to show it to you 20 years from now. You say it's my fault all the time that you couldn't see the baby's face. Mm. She is the way she is. She's lying down. She's moving on her life. That is right. Boo! You want to look at daddy, mommy? Ciao, Juliana. Yeah. Ciao. Yeah, she answered you. Yeah. Yeah! Yeah! More! Talk with those big blue eyes! Huh? Ha! Ha ha ha! La 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 la! La 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 la! Juju! Well, it could still use a little bit of hand under the, under the head. This is beautiful. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Oh, what a dog. See? Look at me. Oh, yeah. Look at me standing up. Look at me standing up. That is so afraid to fall with the camera. How pretty. He, he doesn't have enough space How to see you standing up. How pretty. How about back there, Dad? Yeah, that's better. Wiggle wobble, wiggle wobble. Okay, Betty will almost finish the tape. Zippity doo da. Let's zoom. Z zoom into the camera. Zoom. Zoom. Ooh, Don't move from there. Don't move from there. Don't move from there. What do you want to say to do in the camera? I love you. Look with your eyes open. Ah! Ah! Oh! 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 Gesundheit. That's why we're sneezing because we don't have any socks on. And our feet are freezing. Oh, oh, oh. Wash the down. You got water. Just tell me where you want it. Let him try it.
again I know the answer to it I'm going to sue them not for damages I'm going to sue for the purpose of demonstrating the truth in court and as a remedy I'm going to ask that the court order them order them to run a, a column that I will draft stating the truth as developed in court in other words now they can't claim I'm depriving the public of the truth I'm really ensuring that they are getting the truth and maybe maybe that will work because you know you the Supreme Court of the United States has said that which amplifies discussion is not an impediment to the First Amendment mm -hmm. it's only that which eliminates subject matter from and I believe in the First Amendment I mean don't, don't misunderstand me it's just that uh, the media is economic they I mean, you know they're like anybody else they have their biases I mean yeah, just because they're a group I mean they have they see their own problems. They say, well, they're going to be coming in here and getting our papers. They're going to be getting this. I understand that. But uh, you can see uh, the Congress is going after the president's papers. Yeah, they but go listen, after... Okay, let's go back to that discrepancy that, that, that you pointed out. Um, don't you think that, that there's some application of the concept of a legitimate news function involved there? You know, while, while a reporter or a... a a journalist or, or a cinematographer uh, may have legitimate news uses for those things which he gathers. That, well, uh, I can't see none of us are immune. None of us are immune from testifying before a grand jury as to what we know about crime. For example, I mean, if I see a crime being committed, and a grand jury calls me, and I say, I right, mean, I don't want to know nothing about it. I mean, you know, and I'm not going to testify. I'm thrown in contempt of court. And I'm locked up. And I mean. Because you work for the media, you should be able to say, "Well, I have a legitimate purpose." I mean, I think that's a denial of equal protection. Why should I be, you know, put up in a rack, so to speak, and put in jail because I won't speak uh, about something I saw? But you can go see it, write about it to the public at large, um, and and there's, you know, they can't make you tell about it. Uh, there was a very, very interesting article uh, by a newsman against the shield laws and he believes that it, it puts it into the arbitrary hands of the reporter because the reporter may reveal it I mean he may elect to reveal it he gets it from the source and the, now he's the only one that determines whether the reporter once acquiring it is the only one that determines whether it will be exposed or not exposed which is kind of crazy in its own way uh, yeah, but like if I go if I go thinking things in court, you know, my my sources oh, are going to cut off immediately. How about our informers, police informers, same way. <laughs> I mean, you know, that, the the point is, you know what I think, you know what I think it is <laughs> in simple terms. Media is a coward. Media is the media to a real extent is a coward. If they really believed 
you know, uh, in, in this. They would say, fine. I mean, you know, you want to talk to us, fine. If you don't, I mean, but, but don't condition it on that I will or won't reveal it. Because when you tell it to me, if I feel that, that it merits uh, exposure, I'm going to expose it. You know, uh, then a guy's, you got to clam his mouth or talk to him and everything he says is going to come out. Uh, I have never used, you know, the shield of, this is off the record, except to the extent that I said, I tried to explain to him, say, now, now you're interviewing me not as Ray Markey citizen, but as Ray Markey assistant attorney general, therefore, if I'm going to get in the area of what I think, and it may be, you know, it may be inconsistent with what my professional position should be from the standpoint of the office, that would embarrass the attorney general, and I'm obliged not to say it or say it off the hook. I think you can understand that. You know, I mean, if I disagree well, with General Shannon, yeah, I mean, if I disagree with, with a formal position by the elected attorney general, I'm not willing to abide by that. I just shut my mouth or I get out. Now, he's never put a damper on any of us, you know, just to make sure that we indicate with clarity that which is our own personal viewpoints and that which is official, you know, official position. Yeah, I, mean, I can understand that because he's got to live around here too. And I, I think it's, you know, these people who work for the Attorney General or work for a governmental agency, and they say, well, now, now I can't tell you, and you, you know, you can't identify me, but I want you to know what this guy's doing, doing is it? That's trash, man. I, mean, it, I think most Americans resent uh, this business about from a reliable informant, you know, uh, they say, hey, man, who is this guy? How do I know? Maybe he's mad at the guy because he went out with his girlfriend or, you know, snaked him out or something. He's just vindictive. How can you evaluate the credibility of an unknown source of information? How do you know he's in a position to know that what he says is so is so? And so, I mean, I need to know who it is that says something. And I happen to think that if, if Bob Shevin, you know, took a course of action, which I re regard as really reprehensible, or illegal or something like that. And it bothered, I mean, it got to be a real bother to me. I, I would, you know, I would resign and say, I, first of all, I, I cannot work under these conditions, uh, you know, and, it just w and I will not. And therefore I resign and I call a news conference and expose it. Now, if I'm unwilling to do that, I just think it's trash to work for a man and, and here it comes out the paper. I mean, I don't like that. No. Some people think that, that way, that's the only way you can get to these public people. Now, I don't know. I don't know. I just, uh, sometime or another, you got to have guts. And I've walked out. I've quit. I quit public, uh, private practice. As you walk right out of that guy because he insisted that I do something. You know, take a position in court. And I told him, hey, man, uh, I'm a lot of things, but I'm not a fool. I'm not going to stand up in court and say that. And, and therefore, you take your, you know, your partnership and you jam it where it'll do you the most good and walk down. And I think that, I think most people will do that. When it really gets down to, to, to the nitty grit of it, I think a lot of people know where the line is. I think a lot of them every day say, I want, well, Richardson, Elliot Richardson, classic example. There's a guy, he just says, I'm not going to do it. If you don't like it, then the thing for you to do is, uh, is fire me or I'll resign. One or two. And I think that's what, I think that's why everybody, you know, is saying so many things uh, about the man that they are, because I thought that. Uh, that took a lot of courage on his part. I think it demonstrated uh, to a lot of people that there are a lot of men that just simply are not going to engage in business as usual. And, and uh, yeah, I don't like Sunday school tales, man. I mean, you know, if you got the if you if you got the courage of your convictions, you just say it anywhere. I mean, uh, and if you're unwilling to identify yourself, then, then what good is it? I mean. Another thing I think with the, another problem with the media is is that they don't pay enough money to the on scene report gatherer of information. And uh, you get some guys and hey, what's happening, you know, you tell them and he, he writes junk. I, I mean I've seen quotes attributed to me that I remember the conversation vividly and I didn't say that. I mean it got all screwed up, not deliberately. I mean in fact the story was, you know, uh, favorable from my vantage point, you know, placed it in a favorable context. But but I mean, I just didn't say those things, and it wasn't even the law. I mean, the guy was, the guy was, if anything, getting everybody screwed up in the process.
He was primarily he misquoting was people, though. You didn't find it unduly subjective, though, did you? Oh, no, 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 no. It was, it was negligence, man, laziness, uh, uh, unprepared. I mean, you know, I mean, it, it wasn't competent journalism. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying it was shady. It was, you know, warped or anything else. I mean, I have the only one time that I've ever been badly treated by a news organization. It was in that case where we ultimately confessed there, and they accused us of of all sorts of injustices down here. Kilpatrick picked it up and wrote a big editorial on it about the, the quality of the j judicial system in Florida after we had confessed there and the Florida Supreme Court ordered a new trial. Never mentioned that. Now, now, what is that? What are you supposed to think when you get this condemning article of the Office of the Attorney General of the, the Judiciary of the State of Florida and it's let, and this thing comes after that very Attorney General's office goes in there and says, these men are entitled to a new trial, and that very same judiciary orders a new trial in the case. I wrote Kilpatrick, I said, hey man, you, I don't know where you got your story from, but you certainly didn't verify it up before you printed it, because these are the true facts. Well, I never even got a, you know, uh, there wasn't even a follow-up article, not nothing. And I resented this. I mean, I could see where if he wrote his article, then we confessed there, then we sent it to him and said, well, you know, it was the pressure of my editor. Why? Why should I, you know, give you this? But we confessed there before his article appeared. You didn't know about it. So I mean, his article couldn't have induced us to take a, you know, to take a, a step uh, for fear, you know, the national. It's those kind of things. It's the mistakes. St. Pete Times wrote an article about a case I had. And